us, this is Benji with Dad Bod Beer Review. As always, got Travis with me. Hi. And as you notice, the background is a little bit different today. We're actually at Camp Taylor, right outside of Copper's Cove, and we're joined today with the owners, Shannon and Jonathan. Hi. <laughs> guys. So uh, what we're gonna do today, obviously you notice we have a few more beers on the table than typical, but that's all right. We're gonna get a chance to dive in, try them all out here in a minute. But we're gonna give them a chance to kind of talk about Camp Kaler and how their business come to be and describe everything that we got going on. Do you want to start off for? Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we originally, it's Camp Kaler Wine and Beer Tasting Yard. We originally started out wanting to do wine and then okay. we added some craft beer and then we added some cider, and then we added some mixed drink. Um, it's mostly just about having fun, coming out, hanging out, campfires, s'mores, and alcohol. Oh, yeah. So this is Shannon's retirement job. Okay. Um, this is something that she created, like, from her vision to having it actually start to develop and grow. Um, and we thought about things that we wanted to do when we were younger and had young kids and couldn't go anywhere or, you know, we wanted to go out and hang out with the guys and the girls. And we had some people that would only drink beer and some people that would only drink wine. Um, right. And then as we got more and more into it, we we're like, hey, what a great gateway. Let's include cider. So now we have people that can try beer, wine and cider. And that cider kind of is the gateway that leads them one way or right. another. It's, so if they only exactly like wine, yeah. right? If they only like wine. We can probably get them going on the cider, and maybe they'll be comfortable enough to try beer. Mm -hmm. If they only like beer, we can have them try some cider, and then it kind of opens them up to try something a little sweeter or something that's a little bit more fruity. We haven't had any complaints about our wine yet. So. No, the wine is. I know that, uh, when we were out here uh, two, three days ago, we definitely tried some of the wines and they were amazing. They were yeah, really they were good. Some of the best wines. We have a lot of fun with it. Um, we have our own. It's uh, space between wine, mm -hmm. um, and it's made and bottled for us. Um, and really, we. Uh, we offer tastings, so typically we'll do a flight, you get six beers, um, or you get six ciders, or you get five wines. Um, not bad. And they'll come out, if they do a beer tasting, they get a badge. They do a wine tasting, they get a badge. They do a cider tasting, they get a badge. They participate in one of Shannon's many events that she comes <laughs> up with, get a badge for that. Y'all just had a chili cook-off yesterday, We correct? did, yeah, it was and I, great. I did not make a merit badge for that, unfortunately. I forgot. <laughs> we'll have to circle back around. Yeah. Yeah, if I find around. one, I'll, I'll get it. Chili cook-off 2.0. <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> and so really, that it's, it's about accountability. Um, it keeps people coming back because they want, everybody's competitive. Everybody right. wants to earn a badge. Everybody wants to have the most badges over mm -hmm. a period of time. Um, and I think that that was genius, the way that Shannon came up with Absolutely. that concept. Um, because we'll have people come in and they're like, how many badges can I earn tonight? Uh, well, that, Probably around five in a typical night. And they're not all alcohol related. Um, right. You can make s'mores, you can sing karaoke, you can play game boards or right. a trivia night or something. It does not have to be drinking. Yeah, or woodworking or painting, right. uh, wine glass painting, wine bottle painting. I think we only have three that are actually related to drinking. Okay. Um, wine, beer, and cider. The rest are all just activities you can do. So going back to what you were saying earlier, it's basically taking all the fun stuff you remember from childhood, from summer camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, let's be able to apply that to adulthood and just right. keep that fun going. Yeah, yeah it, it definitely builds it great sense of community yeah. I definitely feel I definitely can see that with this aspect I think we felt that quite a bit yesterday especially with the chili cook-off you know the fact that we had um, friends and family that were out tasting stuff and trying things out um, and just the overwhelming support from our local community um, you know we do uh, spend a lot of time uh, with units from Fort Hood um, Copper's Cove has been a huge support to us. Um, Lampasas is the county that we live and work in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been really neat seeing the different people come out and be supportive of, you know, our dream, um, but really Shannon's 
vision of where right. she wants this place to be. We get tons of recommendations. Uh, we get tons of different ideas from people. Um, we have really great partners with the vineyards and the breweries um, that uh, bring us their product. And you know, we love talking about what they have and what they sell and what mm -hmm. they do. Because yeah. small business, that, that's really what it's all about. Oh, 100%. People, people selling each other. Um, and not just selling each other, but selling the environment that, right. that and that's, they're a part of. That's definitely something I always thought that's really cool, is you know, like finding something that you love mm -hmm. already and make it work for you so yeah. that you can grow, yeah. not only as a business, as a person, and so on and so forth. It's and we like beer, really we like wine, right? Yeah, it's, it's great. That's Mostly great. I like throwing parties and then people come, so. That's right. Yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> Truthfully, that's where yeah. Shane started yeah. out with this, is she wanted to be a party planner. She was like, mm -hmm. I've done my 20 years of military service. I want to plan fun things for people and come up with ideas for myself. And if the business helps me do some of those things, then, right. then great. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, isn't that the point of business in general is just provide a service where you can relate with people? Yeah. And, right, mm -hmm. something you like to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. Absolutely. Which is pretty cool. So what other events do you guys have coming up? Yeah. We've got um, a murder mystery dinner on February 13th. Um, people dress up in costume, they okay. play a part. Um, they're going to have steak and lobster dinner with it. And then February 14th, we've got a live violin player and um, like the traditional Valentine's dinner with steak mm -hmm. and lobster again. Oh, wow. February 27th, we'll have our crawfish festival. This will okay. be the second time we've done this um, huge event. Um, that's when we kind of go more of a New Orleans style and bring out all the big drink cups and have mm -hmm. specialty drinks and live music again and lots of crawfish and shrimp and sausage. Right. <laughs> lots of beer. Right. Lots, lots of beer. Of beer. <laughs> lots of beer. Um, and typically we'll have about one big event a month. Okay. And then every Sunday uh, we do brunch here. Um, so uh, we have partnered with the Reef. Um, so it's now the Reef at Camp Kaler. He is going to be running our kitchen um, and he'll be running our uh, Sunday brunch. So it's basically your breakfast cooked to order and we have mimosas. Cock mimosas. Uh, yes. Cock mimosas, which are super large. <laughs> um, and um, we typically are going to have some type of live music here on Sundays um, during Football season, football beyond. When it's not football season, whatever's on, right? Beyond for people <laughs> yeah, to exactly. enjoy. <laughs> but really, it's about people coming out and spending time on three acres where they can spread out. They can be COVID safe. Um, they can play cornhole. They can play horseshoes. They can throw darts, um, bocce ball. Really, just kind of come and find just a enjoy the comfortable day. place to sit. Yes. Yeah. It's and that backyard fun atmosphere, right? You know, that's that's really cool. Yeah, 100%. That, I, I love that idea. You come out, eat some barbecue food. Yeah, you know, yeah. You can do all the fun things, and you don't have to clean up. Right, yeah. that's the best yeah, part. Yeah. <laughs> and you can definitely tell that it's like um, that it's a very family and pet friendly area yep. too. You know, like I would have no property with my kids. And we probably had four or five dogs out here yesterday. We did. Oh, that's oh, that's there. awesome. Yeah. That's we awesome. do ask that they're on a leash. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. And I mean, the dogs were probably and happy that's, too. That's the kids People's on dropping the leash chili. They're like, I got Both. it. Sometimes. Yeah. Both. Yeah. <laughs> Both. No, honestly, the, the parents and the dog parents, um, for those of those that don't have yeah. kids, they, they really do a great job of watching after their little ones that are running around doing whatever it is that they're mm -hmm. doing during the time. Um, and, you know, I. I don't think we've had any circumstances where people weren't respectful of other people's space and other people's right. ability to come out and have a good time, which is the most important part. Like, we don't want that to impact somebody else's ability to have a good time. Absolutely. Oh, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. It's now, fun. you guys have said, Shannon, this is pretty much your vision for having fun and everything else. Where did that come from, if you don't mind me asking? Have you always done parties kind of growing up? I have or? always done parties. Um, I just like them. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're fun. Um, I think it started with my daughter's third birthday, Princesses, and they. I found these party backdrops where you can turn a whole room into a castle, and I, I thought it was amazing. 
Um, and then, of course, they just come up with cooler stuff. Right. As time goes, I'm like, I need that. Um, and then we just typically really liked wine. Um, we've gone around to a ton of places and had a lot of wine and grown with our taste buds, I would say. Right. Um, past the Boone's Farm and into <laughs> real wine. <laughs> yeah, that's where everybody's going to start, right? right. Wow, and um, we just wanted to share that with everybody. Um, we drove past a place that looked really cute and we're like, hey, I could totally turn that into a winery. That place didn't work out. Mm -hmm. This was the eighth location we actually looked at. Okay. Um, and grew from there. And speaking of growing, you guys are continually growing, right? You're getting ready yeah. to, of course, you just yeah, mentioned so that you partnered with the Reef, but you're building a new building outside. Yeah, so okay. th this actual portion is going to be the kitchen and event room and then our bar has actually transitioned um, to an open outside kind of feel to it um, and that should be done within the week or two and we'll be fully open and operational yes <laughs> <laughs> a week or two and then we'll be fully open and operational um, right. we're going to do a lot of work on tuesday while we're out here um, yeah. and i think we'll make some really pretty good progress with that and um, yeah, like everything that we have done here has just been a little bit bigger, a little bit better every single time. Um, mm -hmm. Very cool. Absolutely. Thank you. So, what do you yeah. say? You want to get into yeah, some beers, guys? I, I'm like, I'm, I'm trying I'm, to get into it. I'm good. Beer. It's, right. it's already past beer 30 yeah. for me. So, so, Jonathan, so what do you got for us first? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have four beers for you guys to taste today, okay. and we're going to start with the Hung Jury. It's a Hefeweizen. It's um, this one? Right yeah, here. it's from Legal Draft. Okay. Uh, Very cool. Are we going inside out or outside yeah, out? Yeah, so you, you will both work dark. inside yeah, and work your way out. Yeah. Okay. Almost the same way that you would do a wine tasting, right? So right. So we want to start with a little bit like lighter. That oh, that's very cool. Makes sense. And, of course, we'll have some... Pictures yeah, on absolutely. There, so you guys we'll be making sure to take well. a couple pictures of these cans. That's definitely something that uh, I always like about about beer, especially like craft beers. Yeah, is mm -hmm. the art that goes into the can. Yeah, they're all really. I, and I honestly, we pick a lot of our beers that we carry here based off of what's the cool name for it, or yes. what's the cool label that's right. associated with it, or does it have a rooster on it, or you yeah, know. which has here all is mascot, correct? Yeah, it is. The Kaler's cock is yeah. our mascot. Um, it's. It's just a fun name. It's a little inappropriate if you think that way, but right. it's still clean enough <laughs> you know, um, to have fun with. Said it's an adult theme camp, so right. yeah. <laughs> it is a day camp for adults for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And we picked legal draft because we are, well, I'm retired police officer and he's still a police officer. Well, so thank you for your when service. we're picking beers, we kind of try to stick to the police, fire, EMS themes or if it has a camping name in it. Right. Absolutely. That makes sense. So or, legal draft, they're retired lawyers, and so it kind of just... Yeah, oh, that really? was actually the Basically first type just, of beer that we, as we were going through uh, the distributor's oh, cool. list, we were like, hey, this is cool, this is cool. Oh, look, this sounds like law enforcement stuff. So right. we just started picking off mm -hmm. on those things. Uh, I like that concept that you're going with. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, I definitely have a, I know whenever we go and sometimes we'll buy beer for episodes, sometimes we've gone and bought just strictly off the artwork of the can. Yeah. And right. it's been some like the most amazing beer. Typically and the no label cans are pretty awesome too. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, back so, and then it's, it's like, completely different. Beer. It's kind of touch and go sometimes, yeah. you know, it's kind of like, I guess I've had some with really super great artwork mm -hmm. on there and. And the taste is flat. Isn't yeah, sure. it's like there's a reason the can looked as pretty as right. it did. <laughs> <laughs> Too much work on the can. Yeah, right. Not enough on the beer. That's something that I like about uh, brewer, you know, craft beer and microbreweries and things like that. Is typically they'll find like local artists and yeah, and incorporate them, do, them and incorporate the their and artwork like into that. the cans. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Deep Ellum, uh, yeah. Deep mm -hmm. Ellum, they mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. as well. Um, so that's a really great thing. So I'm definitely looking forward to giving these. You ready yeah. to give it a shot? Yeah, let's All right. give it a so shot. This give it is ready. the hung jury. So we should be having a bit of coriander and orange peel taste. Definitely taste the orange. Yeah. Right. Very citrusy. It's really good though. It's nice and light. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's yeah. that's good. It's really flavorful. 
And there's no dry aftertaste too, which no. is really cool. Mm -hmm. So this one's pretty interesting. Every time we get it, whether we get it on draft or whether we get it in a can, it's always a little foamy, foamy. carbonated. Car very carbonated. Mm -hmm. okay. um, all of Legal Drafts has a lot of carbonation in it. Yeah, and something interesting we talked about when you were here mm -hmm. earlier this week is opening up the can, letting it breathe, and then pouring the glass and letting the glass breathe and allow all those bubbles to work the way up to the right. top. So we actually did that with a couple of different people this weekend and they were like, yeah, this is really good. And hung jury just kind of went on a, uh, on a selling spree um, yesterday while they were out here eating chili. So mm -hmm. I can see why it's a really good beer. It's, it is. It's really good. I feel like this is be like a perfect for like, if it's coming out to Camp Kaler and with your boys and playing cornhole all yeah. day, mm -hmm. that's probably what I would go with because it's a light beer. It that's sets nice light, mm -hmm. but it has a strong, heavy taste. Yeah. And, but it's not like a bitter, like a bitter taste. It's, I mean, it's a Hefeweizen. So, you know, you get the grains and the and coriander. The and yeah, it's really, really good. That's an amazing. That's See, really good. I that's like the that big difference between me and Travis. He'll drink it and he'll like, it has this, has this, and it has this process. I'll drink it and be like, it tastes great. Yeah. yeah. I don't like that it one. Good. <laughs> yeah. Actually a lot of this. Both yeah. very important concepts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, and that's just kind of something that I developed like over time. I was like, why do I like it though? Like, right. Why is it tasting good? And um, that's, that's when I found out that there's, like, I'm right now, I'm uh, learning about. Uh, what type of beer goes in what type of glass to maximize its flavor yeah. and airflow and things like that. So that's kind of something because I was always the guy who was like, it's either in a can, a bottle, or a glass. Right. Yeah. It's beer. We don't get that fancy here yet. Yeah, um, yeah. and that's, that's kind of something that... Our yeah. glasses do tend to walk off very often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've Maybe. got these nice little plastic cups now. Right. <laughs> It makes sense. Take those home. That's so you can start packaging like the glasses the themselves like and just the sell them in a four pack. We do sell the glasses. Oh, do you? Okay. On two acres, they just disappear. Yeah, same right. They, it, they grow legs sometimes. I, I definitely like the artwork on there, too. Thank you. So, how do you want to do these ratings, Trav? Do you want to go through all of them and do one through five, or do you want to go which one's the best? Whatever or gets me onto the next beer fastest because these are the, so far. I'm, <laughs> All right, so let's I'm, go. I'm excited. <laughs> These taste so good. Let's go to the next one, and then we okay. can actually rate them one through four, which one's yeah, the best. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and what do we have next? Tom? So next is Heart of Texas Red. I'll let you take a look Very at cool. that. Yeah, so we've done this brewery before, uh, Four Corners, yep. um, out of Dallas, Texas. Right. Uh, they haven't been around for a whole lot of time. This is one of our newer breweries that we had done. I think it's like they've only been around for like five or six years, I think it was. Not very long. Yeah. Um, but they, cause they do the, the honey, uh, right. The one the we were speaking meal. of right yeah. before we started. Mm -hmm. Very good brewery. So I've got high hopes for this one. High okay. expectations because that beer, if I'm not mistaken, was a 4.5. That's five. true. So that's a really high score. Well, set that can down. Let's find out. Yeah. I'm <laughs> tired of holding the cans. We chose that one because it has a rooster on it. That's that yeah. is simple. And we've had a lot of people asking for reds lately. Yeah, so we've red has been very popular. On the amber hills. Over the past three or four months, really, it's mm -hmm. been pretty popular. It's very different from the first one. I love one. it. Yeah. <laughs> what I, I do, I do, I really like that because you can taste the malt. Mm -hmm. Yes. The malt the is a little bit heavier on the other flavor. You can still taste like the pine and that little bit of citrus but it's more malt heavier. Yeah, it is definitely a thicker. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's great, it's fantastic. It's yet again another, I mean, them knocking it out of the ballpark again. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, then that's what I like is a consistent brewery. Right. You know, mm -hmm. when a brewery is consistent with not just one type of beer, but multiple types yeah. of beers. I like that too, it makes it easier mm -hmm. uh, to order. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. That's a good that's point. Mm -hmm. If you have a customer comes in, they're continually looking for the, the same thing. You're like, we don't have it this week, but it's from the same brewery. And you know that yeah. across right. the board, the quality is the same. There's something that's similar to. And that, that has been one of the challenges I think that we have found with breweries is like sometimes we will go through beer so fast and we're like, hey, this was great. Um, we would like to order two more slims of that. And they're like, oh, well, that was seasonal or. I hate um, seasonal. Right. Hate it. Or um, we're out of that right now. But they always come back with 
really good recommendations. And sometimes they come in and they work out great mm -hmm. and they sell really well. And sometimes they come in and they're a little bit slower to sell. Um, but it doesn't mean that we wouldn't bring them back around. It may just be the time of year or it may just be right. you know, the, the taste of the group that's here for that period of time. And it may sell really well and then it may not sell quite as well the next time. I guess that's the beauty of it because anywhere across the nation or the world, if you will, whether it be beer or certain types of foods, you'll see some spots like, all we're selling this week is nothing but burgers. Yep. Next week, the same area wants nothing but nachos and yep. so on and mm -hmm. so forth. Like it, there's no exact science to it. It's right. just kind of what people's feeling that week. Mm -hmm. I de definitely yeah. think we have felt I that. I mean, I've yeah. tried to figure it out. I have a whole spreadsheet on what to, what event to do when and how it went. And, and what alcohol is mm -hmm. associated yeah. with it. Because um, some it's either all beer one month or it's all wine. Yeah. Like it, yeah. It's weird. Let's find a way to perfectly mix the two somehow. What do I need to order? Right. You know, That's we're, all I need we're selling know. chili yesterday. And we thought it was going to be a huge I beer. I thought it would event. be a huge, and it did. Like we did pretty well mm -hmm. on beer, mm -hmm. but the wine yesterday sold like it was really? going out of style. I was like, right. what is happening? <laughs> It's like, whenever I wake up, that's not two things I think to pair right. together. I yeah. think chili and I'm taking either grilled cheese or PB&J. Yeah. Yeah. I do yeah. have grilled cheese with it. And like a good hearty beer, like a... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like a, but, like but the fuck. fact that it was, yeah. Yeah. Not, mm -hmm. I would never want to But thought. it was not. It right. ended up really being, seriously, it was the wine. I was like, oh my God, the wine is just <laughs> going. That's A. Hey, it's good though. It's yeah. good for business. Yeah, it was great. It right. Was, yeah. It made no it complaints. easy for us too, because... <laughs> Like they started off on, in glasses and they're like, uh, just give me the bottle. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> so it really enabled us to be able to, to, to go out and do things that certain beer can, can be pretty labor intensive. Sometimes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the fact that I can give somebody a bottle of wine and I can walk away and I can go do the other things that need to be taken care of was mm -hmm. pretty awesome yeah, too. We like to get around and talk to people about what they're drinking, not just, yeah. we don't really consider ourselves a, a bar. Right. Where I'm just like, what do you want? Here's your drink. I, yeah. I want to interact with you about it and talk about it. What kind of beer are you drinking? What do you normally drink? Well, I might have something comparable. And see, that's something that I feel sets you all apart from a lot of different places. That personability is wanting to build rapport with people and actually, like you said, just communicate yeah. with them. Be like, hey, what are you drinking? Why are you drinking that? And everything else. Just try this. Yeah, try this. And a lot of people <laughs> appreciate trying. that. Like, don't get me wrong. I love it when we're slammed. I love it when the bar is packed sure. and every seat is taken and, mm -hmm. and, and and it's really going. But I, I really treasure the times that I'm able to stand behind the bar and sit there and have a conversation with the people about what they're drinking and why, what they like about it or maybe what they don't like about it or other places they've gone and things that they've tried. It gives us ideas for things to bring in. Um, and then again, selling Shannon's vision is really, that's what's fun about it to me because mm -hmm. this is work that she's put into it. Um, and I, I'm a part owner, but really, I serve that right. <laughs> I, I do what she wants to He have. works hard, too. Yeah. I need something moved from there to there that's mm -hmm. heavy, or do this or do right. that. He does a lot, too. He's like, I got you. I can yeah. do that. Yeah. Or if I need to leave early, or he needs to leave his job early and come be here, he does that. Well, that's good, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of being a team and building business right. together. And it has been fun. Yeah. 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 The first, now, had you asked us the first year if it was fun, the answer would have been no. Right. Um, we're going into year three, so <laughs> we're a little bit better. Yeah. And, and it's a lot of fun right now. That's business in, in general, is, though. Your first is. year or two, it's always kind of a, a strain, getting your rhythm and figuring stuff out Absolutely. and your market and everything like else. Like, you can read about that all day long, but when you're living it, you're like, I know it's supposed to be hard, but dang. Right. <laughs> it's hard. Right. 100%. We did. We, we got done with the gym today and we were talking about it and we were like, I'm really having a good time doing what we're doing at the camp right mm -hmm. now and seeing the growth and the things that it's we were like, I, I, two years ago, I would not have thought we were going to expand the way that we were expanding. I was like, yep, yeah, we're good. Mm -hmm. We can just keep on operating. And COVID had an impact on it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, us having the ability to expand and and grow a kitchen isn't something that we had planned on doing. Right. Um, but now that we did it a little bit and we're like, oh, I don't really like doing that myself. And having somebody that we know, that we trust, that does a really good job with the right. food that he makes, um, 
and creating that into a partnership, I was like, heck yeah, now we can go and do some new things and now we can expand on things that we wanted to do that we couldn't because we were spending time or money or people money. Right. Um, Lots of money. doing you know, doing things that wasn't exactly our, our initial vision of it. So now you can work on your business instead of in your business. Right. Which allows and you to grow it. And maybe one day it'll way. actually pay me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's just like a. The, I know. Uh, so right mm -hmm. the day that we were coming out here, mm -hmm. um, that afternoon, um, my wife was like, "Hey, do uh, you want to get into this?" And I was like, "No, you know, I got go, I got some work I got to get taken care of. I got I got this day, and then we're coming out and on Sunday. And we're gonna do some filming and stuff. We gotta get some work done." And you know, I got. We, Benji and I were sitting at the table and we're talking and I looked at him and I was like, you know, I tell people, it's like, oh, I gotta go to work. But it did not, like, my, like, what did I do for, like, I get to drink beer for work. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, like, I get to drink beer and talk to cool people for work. Like, that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty that's, awesome. That's not for work sure. to me. That's a blast. Yeah. That's what the end goal yeah. is, right? Yeah. yeah. It's definitely a common misconception. A lot of people, they hear starting their own business and they think about the easy life, sitting on the beach, breaking their money. And it's actually the exact opposite. You work so much more, you're paid so much less per time, but it's so much more rewarding because at the end of the day, you're like, you're not capped by what someone tells you to do. You're like, if we want to grow, we can grow. If we want to stay here, we'll stay here, right. whatever the case may be. And it has given us some freedom and flexibility to do some things. But in the same breath, it's also been something that we're like, oh, well, we'd love to go out and do this, but we can't because we have to be here. And I think um, we've done a really good job about hiring people that we trust. Mm -hmm. and I have a really good um, team. And Very cool. that mm -hmm. has really started to enable us to, to have more freedom that we can go away, we can take a weekend and go on vacation, or we can you know, take a cruise and go somewhere and do things. Um, because we have people, we have really good employees that come here and they sell the product the way that we would sell it, which you don't find that everywhere. No. Yeah. Sometimes we can be a little hard-headed, like, no, 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 that's not the way I would say it. I would that's say not how I would do it. <laughs> but they're still, they're doing a really good job with it. and um, They're invested in the place and the products we sell right. and the concept. Um, and honestly, most really of our good. employees are former customers yeah it's a win-win that way yeah yeah it definitely helps because now they're like oh well yeah i can come here and i can do this and, yeah because um, they'll be here drinking they're like how do I, can i work here i'm like absolutely yes <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're hired, you're hired. <laughs> you're hired. Yeah. What, um, Real quick, do we want to knock out this last video? Did, well, we got two to go. Yeah, we got two, yes. So what do we have next? So the Texas Twist is next. Um, that one by far has been our most popular IPA. Uh, that one and Smash and Grab from Legal Draft have definitely been our top two IPA sellers. This one's really kind of cool. It's a double IPA. It's got an interesting, almost like a cactus fruit finish to it. Yeah. Um, I think it's subtle. Yeah. It's real subtle. And people drink and they're like, this is a double? And I'm like, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. this is a double. Right. And so it, it will start to, to creep up on you and then it'll hit you all at once. I like that. Uh, it, it's, it's smooth compared yeah. to a lot of them. I, was I agree. Expecting... There's not a whole lot of extra shake or extra um, bitterness at the end of it. I, I really do think it kind of sits nice. That, what I liked about that is, you know, sometimes you get a double IPA and it's just like so hot. Tiny and yeah. hoppy, you know, it just dries your mouth out, and you're like, you know, that's that was smooth. I didn't, didn't even notice you don't it. feel that, yeah. you don't yeah. feel that super dry finish. Yeah. And I'm not typically, I'm not huge on IPAs, I can absolutely drink them. Um, the more I drink, the more I can drink them, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, this one, the first time I tasted it, I was like, yeah, you know, I could sit down and I could absolutely have a, a, a glass of that mm -hmm. um, and enjoy it. And the customers continually ask for it. It's mm -hmm. something that um, every IPA drinker that has come up here, um, I've never had one that said, nope, I don't like it. Um, and I've never, that I can recall, had one that's come up and not asked for another. Oh, so, right. that's awesome. pretty cool. 
that's definitely a great product to have on hand. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it makes it easy. Right. For sure. And I think that's the can for the last one. That's correct? the can. Buried for the last Hatchet one. Stout. Oh, Southern Star. One of our okay. favorite breweries. Southern Star is really good, yes. So we have done the uh, conspiracy theory IPA. Yeah. Yep. If you, yep, we have carried it. We um, have, it, that got a five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that got a right. perfect yeah. score. It's one of the best IPAs I've ever had. Yeah, it's really down. good. Really good seller for it. That, that was a fun video because in the background we had E.T. popping up and <laughs> all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> we typically carry that on draft, um, but it's really hard to get. So yeah. whatever I can get my hands on, I'll take it. Well, yeah. Yeah. I found the Southern Star Brewery um, does a really good job with the majority of their beers. Mm -hmm. um, the Bombshell Blonde, the Strawberry Blonde oh are always super Bombshell big. Bombshell Blonde, Strawberry Blonde, yeah. those are fantastic beers. So we have like three Southern Star on tap. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, they, they're one of those breweries that, uh, mm -hmm. like we previously mentioned before, the consistency. Yep. Right. I have never gotten a beer from them, and like a six pack or a 12, and sat down and cracked open a can and had a bad experience. Yeah. No, I agree. And even um, even some of our normal domestic drinkers that come oh, in, wow. having the ability to have that has been pretty cool. Just that initial smell is that good coffee aroma. No, hundred oh, percent. Yeah. So buried hatchet was the first stout that we ever carried, mm -hmm. and it is the one that we have absolutely left. Um, like, we'll always have it, it, whether it's in can or whether it's on tap. Oh, so that's wow. one that we just, everybody likes it. Nobody's mm -hmm. ever not liked it. Um, it's, it's like drinking a, just a, a better version of coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like drinking a good cup of coffee and you get the benefit of the beer. I mean, look at that. It's thick caramel yeah. collar. Mm -hmm. like it, it's a perfect, it's a perfect snap. Yeah, that's we'll really good. So what do you think, Trav? You ready to put them in order? I don't Which even do want folders in my cup after this. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Now you yeah, yeah, some, you're uh, great, man. Go for yeah. it. I'm, yeah, he's busy. Right. He's, he's, busy. he's drinking over here. I'm so good. Um, I'm, I'm partial, though. I'm a fanboy of stouts and porters. That's true. Okay. I, I like good, thick, hearty beers. Well, good. Um, so, yeah. We've got stouts another new one that we got in. Um, Java. The Java. Yes. Uh, when you talk about the can design, that one's, that it's one's like really Mario cool. Brothers. Yeah. It's oh, that's cool. We actually have an employee whose husband's picture we believe it is looks like. on the bottom of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, that's Keith. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it might be. You yeah. never know. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to do it? Yes. Yeah, so um, it. let's go ahead and put them in order. Which one do you like the best? Just in, move oh, them the out. Best? The best? Oh. Okay. He drank more than you. He, he did. Yeah. This is be, <laughs> That's typical. <laughs> this is going to be difficult because I really like every single one of these selections. I've got to go with my stout as favorite. So really? I'm going to put that up there and I'm going to give that a five. We're That's going on a five favorite. on the opposite end. Oh. Yeah. That is, that is the best stouts I've had, hands down, <laughs> period. Southern Star. Knocking out of the ballpark again. That's, That's two right. fives they've gotten on our channel. That is true. Right. That is and true. And I, I already know because I've had the uh, the blonde bombshell before. That's that should be a six. Yeah. Because that's one of the only <laughs> light beers. Like blonde bombshell. That's oh, yeah. one of the yeah. only light. Yeah. Because that's, that's a lager. lager. Is that a lager or a pilsner? It's I think that not a pilsner, but it's, um, it's like it's a blonde a, lager. It's a blonde ale. It's a, it's a yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay. And that's what, and I yes you know me I don't like light beers very much but that's <laughs> right. spot on every time. Mm -hmm. So we, I guess we go with our. Yeah, let's see if number two. Here, I'll move these over here. Sorry about that. Yeah, my, apologies. my apologies. All right, so let me taste these again. Yeah, I need to too. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. All right, I got my choice. You're gonna go with the Texas Red. I am. I'm gonna go with. I'm actually gonna put the double IPA. Yeah. Side. Follow your heart. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm gonna go with the double IPA. <laughs> Because taste-wise, double IPAs are not something I've, I, I drink them, mm -hmm. I buy them, but it's kind of one of those things where I'm just like, eh, take I like it. it. Yeah. Because sometimes I end up with my mouth just so dry. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that dry finish. It makes but sense. I didn't get that. With that. Okay. So, so what do you want to rate it? That. I'm gonna give it a four. A I'm four. Give it a four. Okay. So, I'm going to give this one a 4.5, so 
rating wise, we're, we're right there with each other. Well, Different beers at this time, but that's you know. where I'm gonna have to disagree with the Texas rating. <laughs> I'm giving it a five. Okay. Just because that was, I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Right. Okay. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Like I was expecting like three and a half, four. Right. Again, from another brewery that we have done, mm -hmm. and the consistency. But, hey, I can't fault you for it. I can't. I can't fault a consistent brewer. Right. Yep. That master brewer is doing his homework and he knows yeah. what he's doing. Like, don't let that guy go. Right. You know? All right. And then so, as far as the rest of my lineup, up. I know you like coffee. I'm not a huge coffee yeah. guy. Uh, <laughs> I got to yeah. put it at the end of the thing. And you know, I haven't had a cup of coffee in a year. I, I have really? not drank coffee in a year, but I love stouts. Yeah. I never drink coffee. I don't drink yeah. coffee either. Yeah. I have a coffee pot for guests that stay at my house mm -hmm. because Coffee is like a conversation thing for me. Yeah. Like if everyone's you drinking sit down it, and talk and it's like, oh, yeah. 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 sit down and talk over a couple of Yeah, that's the exact yeah. same thing. Yeah. So. Now, speaking of coffee, though, my grandfather, he used to drink three pots a day. It's yeah. like nonstop. As soon as he'd wake up, pour the coffee, well, <laughs> start another one. <laughs> we did have a buddy back when we were in high school, and what they would do whenever they would drink coffee, yeah. um, they would just reuse the same grounds, put fresh grounds on top. Okay. And after about 15 pots going through in one day, <laughs> that stuff was coming out so thick. I had no. to like stir oh. that stuff with a spoon. No. And I drank it and I thought I was having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> like I took a sip, just a sip. Uh, and I thought I was having a stroke. No. But he drank a cup and took a nap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your body gets used to it after a while. Yeah, I guess. I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I gotta go with the, the Hefeweizen. Okay. The uh, Hung Jury. I'm gonna give it a four. I'm gonna give it a four? Okay. I'm gonna give it a four. I'll get right there with you. I'm not huge on light beers but it's delicious. Right. Yeah, I could tell he likes the lighter ones and you're more darker. Yeah, that's why darker. IPAs are where we kind of meet. You know, yeah. Yeah. sometimes IPA it's is still a little much for me, spot but yeah. on. Like, uh, Voodoo Ranger is a huge one for yeah. us. Yeah, I enjoy Voodoo Ranger in 1985. if I was to sit here and pour you all's drinks, that's exactly the order I think I would have lined them up for both of you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So it worked out pretty spot well then. <laughs> spot on. Like, I, I'm definitely going to be... Yeah, <laughs> getting some more of that. Here. I'm gonna finish this stuff. <laughs> this is delicious. Sure. Right. Sat and have some breakfast. Exactly. What yeah, that being actually, said. absolutely. It smells like bacon. Yeah, yeah bacon, bacon cooking bacon in the bacon background. Like, it's great. It's amazing. There's people walking around all over the place. They're getting ready, doing brunch and stuff. Yeah. Stout and some bacon and eggs. Yeah. Oh, and that, yes. You're in heaven. That dude. does. Sound I, this good. is yeah. I, anytime I can go somewhere and I can get a good stout and some food, especially because the reef, yes. right? The reef. Mm -hmm. So when you come this, come here, go to the reef and get the, what, what the, they have. The other night I had ribeye. a ribeye grilled cheese. Yeah, ribeye yeah. grilled yeah. cheese. Nice. Who the thinks steak and cheese. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's life changing, honestly. It really yes. was. I had the first steak and cheese um, the other night and I was like, I don't even know if I want his ribs now. I just want his simple steak and cheese. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I took a bite and Travis just kind of looked at me. He's like, dude, you, you okay? And I was like, yeah, his it's just so closed. good. His like, eyes were just, It's great. Just give me a moment. <laughs> yeah, like he, he was like, like he had his great. eyes closed and he was like force shutting me up, like using his force <laughs> to like shut me up. So I just got to take just a moment and enjoy, enjoy this. Yeah. That was an experience. And so when you come here, guess who's going to be making your food? Yeah, the Reef. Yeah. Yeah. Check yeah. it out. Reef at Camp Camp. Oh. It is a tons of fun. With that so, being said, do you guys have anything else that you want to talk no. about with your story? I think what, what you guys do is pretty awesome. Like To be able to go out and go to different places and try things. And, that's and a good talk. job. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a good job. Enjoy. I think I'm not that's a really cool mm -hmm. gig, and I appreciate you guys coming out and spending some time with us, letting us talk about you know, Shannon's vision and the way that our it's business... It's our vision. Yes. You did help. We are joined it's together. Our, it's our it vision. It's like, you, you build a table. Clear, it goes along Shannon's path. It might have been initially been your vision. Like, hey, let's start a winery. And I said, okay. I want that <laughs> spot. Like, was good. Not too often the is going to be like, this is ours. It's true. I win. Yeah. It, it is on camera, too. So. Yeah, it's on camera. She said it's yours. And hers. So. Um, but yeah, I, 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 love, I love what we do here. And... 
Um, every time Shannon gets a, a win at camp is mm -hmm. a win for everybody. And I think that having you guys come out today and spend some time with us has been a win. So I appreciate Absolutely. you guys. Absolutely. Well, thank you, you, know, you for inviting anytime. us out. It's definitely been an enjoyable on our end as well. Anytime we can come out and help businesses, you know, just be there with local businesses and grow with them and be a part of that like that, it's a, it's an amazing it's a experience for yeah. us. Yeah. That's, that's what we wanted to start this for was, you know, the craft beer world and people that support the craft beer yeah. world mm -hmm. and help them grow in the community to, so that not everybody's going by and just be <laughs> named beers. Yeah. That I right. can't say on camera, not Budweiser. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never be sold here, by the way. Yes. Yeah. We, we do yeah. get that a lot. Do you have... We do sell some domestics. Yeah. We do. But, the, um, but they're good ones. Yeah. They're good ones. They're good ones. They're good ones. They're the kind from, that I would buy. From up the road in Dallas. They're not the type that people are just going to leave in the parking lot and trash up. My yeah, exactly. 100%. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. But absolutely. You got anything yeah. you want to add real Yeah, quick? I want to add. Look at this. Oh, yeah, our yeah, new shirts. We didn't even talk about that. Those are pretty awesome. Merch. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah, we're growing up in the world. Getting I like kind that of, a lot. I mean, we're not going to say we're big, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Growing a little bit, you know. Cool thing is, Camp Kaler has shirts as well. Yeah. Camp Kaler does yeah. have amazing <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shirts, alcohol, merit badges. We Ooh. do sell sashes to put yes. your merit badges in. <laughs> oh, I, really? Yeah. They're over there, but they're... That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. So, when oh, Lydia's selling her Girl Scout cookies, yeah. which I can't say on camera. Oh, I love it. Too late. When she's yeah. selling her Girl Scout cookies and she's out there with her, in her little like Girl Scout vest, I could wear it in my Camp Kaler sash. Jeez, you could. Yeah, right? Be like, like, look, I earned okay. every single yeah. one. Yeah, I, look how many merit badges I earned. Right. As I stumble around the parking lot. <laughs> I won cornhole last week and I got a badge right here. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, one thing that we will make sure, uh, we'll take a picture of, uh, well, you all know from the community, in the dad bod community, uh, we'll have the behind the scenes photos, we'll definitely be posting some pictures and stuff like that. Cool, that'll be great. I'll go ahead and wrap us up then. Yeah. Uh, like Travis said, guys, we will have some pictures posted up to our Facebook, possibly Instagram later, we'll be revamping that a little bit in the coming weeks. And we just want to say thank you guys again so much, so much for having us out. Make sure to like, subscribe to the video, and of course, follow for the podcast. We'll be dropping links for their business as well as everything you saw here today. So you can check it out and get a little few yes. pictures, some history facts right below. And with that, we will see you in the next one.